Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about uh, static structural analysis in 2D objects. And this time I chose this uh, simple uh, rectangular plate with a hole in it to show you the stress concentration. And uh, I made it using the sketches and I applied some small thickness. So uh, now that I made this in geometry, I can go ahead to static structural, grab it and bring it here. And then uh, I can go ahead and um, drop this geometry that I made in geometry and uh, apply it to the static structural. Or you don't even need this. You can uh, create the static structural and go to the geometry here and create the same uh, geometry. So here I go ahead and grab it onto the geometry, connect them together. There we go. So this is going to take that uh, shape. And the other thing you need to do is typically under uh, analysis type, when you come here, it's by default 3D. Okay. So your static analysis is 3D. If you want to do 2D analysis, so you click on geometry, you go here and change it to what? To 2D. The other thing you want to make sure is whether the, the material you want to use is what you want. So you go under engineering data and double click and see what material you have. So right now you have structural steel as the material and all of the properties for it are all shown under linear elastic, which is a material that is considered in uh, ANSYS. Structural steel is considered linear elastic. And you see, you have the Young modulus, you have the density, you have the Poisson's ratio, and then the bulk modulus and shear modulus are automatically calculated from that because it's elastic and because it's isotropic. If it's not isotropic, then you have several of these uh, parameters and uh, not every ratio can be calculated. So sometimes you have to provide the bulk modulus or the shear modulus. But G is related to E and nu, right, for a linear elastic material, isotropic. Uh, if you want to add any other material, you can always go ahead and add that here, right? So uh, you can right click, uh, you can type in the material you want. So let's say it has some plastic that is not available in the list, right? So you can go ahead and say, for example, I want to add TPU plastic, right? and enter here and this TPU plastic, right? You can choose what kind of material is that and go ahead and um, say, hey, this guy is uh, isotropic um, elastic as well, and then go ahead and type the numbers for it, right? So this is the Young modulus. You can say, for example, this guy is, uh, the number for it is two gigapascal or anything for that matter, right? So any number that you want, you can go ahead and number that. And you see these are the units. So you can change that to megapascal, kilo, giga, whatever you want. So let's say it's 2 gigapascal and the Poisson ratio is like 0.25 or anything like that. Okay, so it can define the material. And then you can say which one of these material to be activated uh, or to be deleted in your um, model. Okay. And uh, ANSYS has also a big list of materials. So if you go here under engineering data sources, you have a list of lots of different materials here that ANSYS has for uh, simulations. And here you can see this air and uh, other things. It's not just that. If you scroll down, you can see brass, copper, magnesium, and so many other material here, right? And you can always go ahead and add them to the list of what you want. And here you can see again, if you go down this list, you see fluid material, magnetic material, hyperelastic, composite, general material, right? So you have a list of so many different types of material that you can, even additive manufacturing material, right? So TPU is one of them. Maybe you can find it in your list here, right? And, um, uh, you can always add them to your list. So uh, you can go ahead and add anything that you want. So let's say for the moment, I'm just good with the structure of steel. So I go close this and go back to the project, double click on the modeling. And remember I set it to 2D analysis. 
So now I go ahead and apply the constraints. I apply the loads. I uh, make sure that uh, I have a good mesh, although I have a video soon coming that I'll talk about mesh and mesh quality and uh, all sorts of adjusted, but I'll show you a little bit in this video. So um, in this case, we have a stress concentration. And when you have a stress concentration around the areas that the stress is high, you need fine mesh. Otherwise, the results are not going to be accurate. So here is your object. And uh, if you just right click on the mesh and say generate mesh, it is going to give you a rough mesh, which is not going to be super good, you see. The mesh elements are the equilaterals, which are way better than the triangles, as we'll talk about it in a future video in terms of convergence speed. But clearly, this is a rough mesh, and definitely around the circle, it should be, shouldn't be like that. So I can right-click on the mesh, insert, and bring down the overall sizing, right? So I can choose this to apply it to, and the element size is 16. So I can, for example, make it 4 mils. Then I can update my mesh, right? to get it overall global smaller size and then I can do a refinement so here you see I have applied a much smaller mesh but again around the stress concentration area I want finer mesh so what I will do I go to insert mesh and uh, by the way as you can see here uh, the uh, sizing is added but uh, if I go under mesh and say insert method the method is automatic, which in this case, it should be equilateral dominant, as you can see. And what I want to add here is mesh um, refinement. So I say mesh refinement. I choose the edge selection, and I choose this edge, and I say apply a refinement around that, which means make the mesh basically uh, finer, make it smaller over there. So let's see what it gives me. There we go. So now if I look, you clearly can see that I have finer mesh around the stress concentration area compared to the rest, and they are all equilateral. So uh, I guess the meshing is relatively good. But again, there are metrics for the mesh quality, which we'll talk about them. There are skewness, aspect ratio, and so on. So for now, let's just assume that this mesh is good enough. We go to insert under static structural and uh, we apply a fixed support on one end and we apply that and then we go to right click here and apply a force on this other end and we choose it instead of vector we define it by components and align the x direction we apply like 20,000 or something like that and uh, by the way under this analysis setting here you have some controls that at uh, when the time comes we can talk about it for example if you assume that you're going to have large deflections you can always go ahead and turn this on which can make your uh, uh, your simulations non-linear and it takes more time for the moment it's not going to be that much we can check that and uh, we can assume this is off the other thing is this weak springs and this is where you turn it on when you uh, think that there might be some rigid body motion in the system. So you have not sufficiently constrained the system. The uh, plate can move. If that's the case, then it is going to uh, affect your numerical calculations big time because it has a combination of deformation and rigid body. So if you assume that you want to go with whatever you have, but it might not be sufficient to constrain the system and takes all of the degrees of freedom off, go ahead and turn this weak springs on. So at least it's not going to, rigid body motion is not going to affect your calculations. For now, the fixed support is going to take everything off, so I'm good to go. Also under solution, there are lots of uh, basically controls, but uh, we get to it uh, at some point so what is it that we want here if we go to insert we want the deformation let's say align directional align the x-axis which is good I also want a one mises a stress so go to uh, stress and get one mises the other thing I want is I want let's say um, safety factor so I go to insert and I 
create stress tools, which if you expand it, it gives me safety factor. So right now I can go ahead and say solve it for me. And it should give me the displacement, the stress, and the safety factor. There we go. So if you look at your uh, total deformation, you see they are like 0 0.02 and the units are mils. So 0 0.02 mil maximum displacement is not a big displacement. So you don't really need to take large deflections on. This is your equivalent stress 86 megapascal, which is way below 210 for structural steel. So the material is acting in the linear region. And this is my safety factor, which the maximum is 15 and the lowest that you have is around 2.8 so nowhere you have any safety lower than 2.8 and you are safe but as you can clearly see here in the stress or in the safety factor around the hole which is a geometry abnormality you definitely have high stresses in this red area compared to the rest of the cross section so if i want to see for example how my stress drops if i look into this vertical axis right so if i go from this point here uh, if i go from a point here all the way to the top here if i go along a path how does my stress changes clearly you see it drops right how does it drop along the path so i see basically my uh, uh, stress concentration factor if i want to see that then um, i can create a plot for it but before that, let me show you a couple of other useful tools. So uh, some of the things you can do here under geometry, you can create isosurfaces, right? Or you can go back and go under contours. You can remove the uh, bands. You can create iso lines. You can do solid fill. The same with edges, right? You can make it more realistic like this if you want to take a picture. By the way, if you want to add a picture, you go under images and create an image right so from this uh, equivalent stress you see now i have added an image and this is something that i can add to my report for example right or i can do section planes right so i can go ahead and create section planes so if i go again to equivalent stress and i go here to section plane and if i activate the section plane here i can draw a section plane like this and look i can get a section plane like that and i can zoom in and I can show it right and then again for that one I can go ahead and uh, create another picture right so there are lots of things that you can do if I go back to the equivalent stress you might say well how do I get rid of this and go back to the original just turn this check mark off so you go back to the original thing um, what else is good for you? We have the probe tool, maximum, minimum. For example, if you want the minimum safety factor, where is the minimum safety factor? Just click on the minimum. Activate safety factor, click on the minimum, and it shows you where it is in this object. Here it's on this corner that you have minimum safety factor or maximum stress. Okay, so um, if you want to animate something, let's say you want to animate this uh, deformation, right? So you can come here and animate it. Now, this is not the right scale, right? This is exaggerated. If you go up here, you see that's the scaling, which is 3.9 times 10 to the 2, so 390 times bigger. If you go to the true scale, then you see you can barely see it with your eyes, right? So most of the time, the auto scale will... Um, make it quite bigger for you so you can see it if you want to see it in a longer time so uh, the motion is slower you want to see it in slow motion change the time here so now instead of showing it in two seconds it's going to show it in 10 seconds so it gives you time to see it the other thing you can do is you can make the motion smoother and see better quality videos if you change the number of frames per second right and this way you're going to see a lot more transition and smoother transitions right and then you can always come here and export your file as a video and save your video and uh then go ahead and look at that video if you want to so uh, these are all sorts of things that uh, you should be able to do here with uh, the results and 
So here is that animation video I just exported, and you can clearly see that. Now, if I go back to uh, ANSYS, so there are other things I said I'm going to show you. One of them was the stress along the path. So in order to do that, you come and click on the model, and then you go to construction geometry, and then you define a path. And here it asks you to define the two endpoints of the path. So what I want to do is uh, I want to choose node elements. So I click here on the node to be able to see the nodes. Then I come down here. And then I say I want to uh, pick the point, right? So um, I can uh, apply a point here. Let's say, for example, a point there, right? And I apply that instead of typing the numbers. And then for the second point, I go and choose a point right here and then apply that. So now my path is going to be between 1 and 2. Now, of course, clearly you see point 2 is uh, not correct, right? So I assume this endpoint is not correct. So let's see. Here we go. So now I have a vertical path that I defined and it's under construction geometry and now I should be able to go ahead and look at the stress along that. So for that I go here, insert stress, one mices, but now here when I go to this, instead of scoping method, uh, geometry selection, I change it to path, and then I choose the path that I just define up here. So now, this guy should give me the stress along the path. So I right-click and say evaluate. Instead of all results, I said just get me this result, it's because the rest of them are already uh, created. And now if you clearly see the stress goes up from 1 to 2, or you can look at the plot of it down here. Right, so from the stress of 13, 9, you go up to a stress of 86, so that is a concentration of almost uh, like um, I would say uh, six times or more than six times. Right, so this is your stress concentration, you have something like six times higher stress close to the circular hole compared to. The places off the uh, circle so the stress concentration factor is high here because the diameter of the hole is big compared to the rest of the size and um, you can always generate a report from this so you go to the home tab you go to the uh, tools and then you see report preview and you can click on the report preview and it is going to generate a report for you, as you can see here, right? Let me bring this guy down so you can see better, right? So this is your report, and there are hyperlinks in it. So you have the model, the material, right? The coordinate system, everything is provided for you, the mesh, right? And these are your mesh quality things. So... Um, the mesh is clearly not perfect, and we have not provided too much of metrics for it. As I said, we're going to discuss it later. No temperature, right? And if we generated some uh, figures or plots or something, you are going to see them here. And Okay, and uh, there are more tools, but uh, we'll get to them when I go to my future videos. So hopefully this video is useful to you, and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you.